Now, the cathedral naturally is in the center of the oldest section of town. Here you very typically will find a Gothic cathedral in many of the ancient European towns, and that's certainly the case here in Barcelona. The Cathedral de Seu, or they would say Catedral, was first built in the 13th through 15th centuries in the traditional Gothic style with a soaring nave and pointed arches, very tall columns with 28 side chapels, and there's a really interesting cloister that's home to a flock of noisy geese with an attitude. Nobody knows quite where these geese came from, but they've been here for centuries and are said to represent purity, fitting right in with the atmosphere of this wonderful church. You can also take a ride up the elevator and venture outdoors onto the roof of the cathedral for a stunning view across the center of town. And that'll help orient you for the walks to come and just give you some great shots for your camera. This prime location uh, atop a low hill was an earlier home of a Roman temple. And then in the sixth century, a church was built here. So it's no wonder that the narrow lanes immediately adjacent are dense with historic structures and small plazas. Standing in front of the cathedral on Plaza de la Seu, you're flanked by two medieval structures. The former, Pia Almuina on the left, had been a monk's residence and then an almshouse that was feeding the poor. And it's now open as the diocesan museum with medieval religious treasures and changing exhibits. And on the right side of the cathedral, there's the fascinating Archdeacon's Palace, Casa del Adriaca, worthy of much closer examination. Looking from the outside, you can see that the Archdeacon's Palace is flanked by two fortified towers that were part of the original Roman wall. Now walk around to the entrance of the Archdeacon's Palace, and here you'll notice an elaborate mailbox with an incised carving of flying birds and a turtle, symbolizing how fast the mail should travel, but how slowly it actually moves. And this also refers to the wheels of justice for uh, at one point here in the 19th century, this building was home to legal offices. Now walk into the patio of the Archdeacon's Palace to enjoy the quiet cloister atmosphere with a beautiful fountain in the middle and arcaded columns all around. And there's a palm tree growing in the center that's a hundred years old. You're also free to walk inside the building into the lobby area at least, and there you can see the original ancient Roman wall. It dates back to at least the year 400 AD. Now naturally, the cathedral itself is right in the heart of the old town, and so there are some lovely strolls to be enjoyed all around it during the day and as well as at night. Uh, many of the shops and restaurants are clustered in the nearby blocks, and there's lots of people out for a stroll, and there are probably several sidewalk musicians providing entertainment. For another taste of history, you might visit the Museum Frederick Marez on Carrer Comptes, or at least walk into its magnificent patio surrounded by a loggia arcade. This private museum contains religious sculpture from the Romanesque through the Renaissance, along with household items from the late 19th century. One block east of the cathedral, you're going to find the former home of the kings and queens, the Palau Royal, or the Royal Palace, which is now a history museum, the Museo de Historia de la Ciutat. In 1493, Columbus reported his great discovery to Ferdinand and Isabella in the palace's spectacular banqueting hall, the Salo del Tinel, whose roof is formed by the largest medieval stone arches in all of Europe. Don't leave the museum just yet because there's a more ancient world waiting for you just below street level. It's 
where you can see foundations of buildings that once were houses and wineries, bakeries, leather factories, and fortified towers. The smooth paving of these streets and sewers attests to the ancient Roman engineering skills, which created some of the world's most sophisticated cities in those days of long ago. Now, if you don't want to pay to go inside, you can just peek in a few of the windows to see a little bit of the underground remains, and then you might visit the gift shop to look at pictures of the site and perhaps buy some souvenirs. There's also Roman ruins visible at street level. Just around the corner on Carrera de Paradis, it's in a little patio, and here you'll see four Corinthian columns that are still standing from the ancient Temple of Augustus, dating back to the first century. And there's also traces of Roman wall a few blocks away uh, along Carrera Tapineria. The principal Roman street intersection in the underground museum is the same approximate location today of a major plaza up above it, San Jauma. That's where the city hall and the regional Catalan parliament, the Palau de la Generalitat, face each other. This was originally the site of the ancient Roman Forum, which was the center of the Roman town. And now 2,000 years later, this is still a major center of activity and there's actually nine streets leading out from this one plaza. And each of those streets is worthy of exploring on foot and having a look at. The many people walking about here make a good audience always for the buskers, those sidewalk entertainers who rely on tips for their income. When you hear some decent sounds, be sure to just stop a while and linger, listen to the magical ambience, and then don't forget to drop a few coins. We heard this fellow in the evening making beautiful music just using glasses filled with water. <laughs>